Yeah, we're not doctors or giving any medical advice. This show is intended for educational purposes only, and you should talk to your doctor about any medical issues. Now let's get at it. Welcome to Chat the Fat, where nutrition authors Nissa Gron and T.C. Hale are going to break down common low-carb mistakes. Let's chat all things low-carb, keto, digestion, and more so you can maximize your results. Hello, good people, and welcome back to Chat the Fat. This is episode 83. I'm T.C. Hale, and I'm also here with Nissa Grun. Nissa Grun is right there. I am here for episode 83. 83 seems like a lot. How's it going? Um, pretty good. How about you? Pretty good. I just got my first print copy of my new book, uh, Become a Work from Home Health or Fitness Professional. That's fun. Yeah, so that should be out by the time this episode comes out. So that's a fun one. Nice. (laughs) Awesome. Um, Does it talk anything about how to teach people to drink alcohol while getting healthier? That's like the first three chapters. (laughs) It's usually just covers. I was drunk when I wrote the first three chapters, so I just kept mentioning alcohol over and over again. That is all anyone seems to want to know these days is how to drink alcohol while still losing weight. So it's definitely a good topic to cover. So we are going to talk about that topic, but what I want to know is like you, I think are more professional at consuming alcohol than I am. Is that correct? Um, in a past life, not, not so much these days, but there was a, a good decade or two that I was probably definitely considered a professional. I actually a had professional. a doctor once tell me that I was an alcoholic, which I was not, but, um, you know, in in college I was drinking three, four nights a week, which was typical and probably less than a lot of friends. And she accused me of being an alcoholic. Right. Yeah. And so I, I just, I don't, we're going to answer some of these questions that I just don't, I haven't implemented a lot of them in keto. I've just implemented them and understand them as far as everything else goes. So we'll be able to do that, but it's been a long time since I've uh, drank much at all. Sarah just decided to quit at one point. It was probably nine years ago. And I was like, oh, I probably just won't have any either, I guess. Yeah, we don't um, drink a ton of alcohol here either. Mostly, not really for weight loss, but I just, toxins don't agree with me whatsoever. And so I could have one drink and it'll result in a migraine for the next week. Yeah, I go ahead and skip the drinks when that, if that happens. That's, yeah, that's good planning. I've, I've gone from my three or four nights a week down to three or four drinks a year, if that, right. which, which I'm both happy and sad about because I do miss wine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's dig in and see what happens then. All right, so alcohol and keto is a question that actually has come up quite a few times in our most recent keto challenge, which we're just finishing up. So our challengers already know the answer, but we wanted to pop on the podcast to help all of our podcast listeners who haven't quite taken the plunge into the challenge. Now, speaking of Keto Challenge, this recent group of challengers are on fire. Booyah. (laughs) As a group, they are down a combined 203 pounds, and every single person in our top five has already had double-digit weight loss in only two weeks. So that's that's pretty fun. Yeah. We we always say don't go by the scale, but when you're getting results like that, you kind of got to go by the scale at least a little bit. A little, little bit, yeah. So if you want in on these challenger secrets, be sure that you get a free seat in our keto masterclass where we reveal the three big mistakes challengers made before the challenge that kept them stuck. And now that they're not making those mistakes anymore, they're finally getting big results like losing double digits in only two weeks. So you can watch that class on demand right now at eatingfatisthenewskinny.com slash masterclass. Yeah, and during the challenge, we do a lot of live videos in the in the support group and stuff. And we talked a little bit about alcohol uh, today in my video. Um, so I'll talk about some of those things that I talked about then, but then we'll get all of your drunk side as well. Awesome. Yeah, so Fran from our Keto Decoded support group, who is taking part in the challenge, recently asked, are there certain wines we can drink and certain wines to keep away from? What about vodka, whiskey, beer, wine, spritzer, etc.? I realize alcohol can lower your resistance to cravings, but can you offer any alcohol suggestions, especially with the holidays coming up and being in the midst of COVID? This would be a helpful topic to explore. 
So we don't necessarily recommend drinking regularly when you're first starting keto, but that doesn't mean that people won't still drink, especially when life gets stressful, as it may be for some people right now. A little um, bit. Especially as we are closer to the holidays. So while that's not to say that you can't have a drink here or there, we typically recommend waiting until you at least see some success so you know that keto is working for you. And once you get into that state where you're losing weight consistently on keto, then it's probably a better time to add alcohol into the mix. And if you stall, then you know what you have to do, which is probably cut out the alcohol altogether, at least while you're still in the process of losing weight. Of course, it's not something most people who drink want to hear, but it's definitely necessary to say. And it's also necessary to hear. Yes. You know, even if you don't want to hear it, it's necessary to hear because people, you know, when they're trying to lose weight, they try all these things. And then when something doesn't work, they decide that they're just broken. But what they did during that process is they decided not to hear some things. You know, they probably read, saw, heard, were told something. Your doctor probably told you you were an alcoholic, but you decided not to hear it. I'm just kidding. But you know what I mean? Like they they end up thinking that they're just broken when really they were just ignoring pieces of information that if they would have changed, they could have seen results. Yeah, I know when I first started low carb, I didn't want to hear it because I was still drinking wine. Um, I didn't realize, you know, how badly the toxins affected me at the time. So I was drinking not a lot of wine, but enough. And, you know, it definitely slowed my weight loss down. So I didn't want to hear it, but eventually I heard it and I stopped. Right. And, and in the middle of not hearing it, though, even though, you know, now, now, you know, it was slowing things down. I mean, how many different diets did you do where you're also pounding some wine each week that could have got you at least some results had you dropped that? You know, it's a it's probably a decent number. That was um, pretty much my entire 20s and even the beginning of my 30s. So, yeah, a lot of diets. Right. Years. <laughs> um, but definitely keep in mind even if alcohol doesn't affect you that way and you are able to, you can deal with the toxins. If you do decide to indulge, your body will always first burn through alcohol before getting back into that fat burning zone. So every time you're having a drink, you're taking a break from burning fat. And obviously you want to keep in mind that a lot of people will want to eat junk food once they add in any alcohol because it lowers your inhibitions. So if you know that's you, which it is most people, it might be best to steer clear until you get closer to your goal. Yeah, and like Kenna and I used to talk about this a lot on Kick It Naturally because she would you know, be in the middle of losing weight and she would go out and have a drink. And so she has the effects of that alcohol but she also has the effects of all the nachos and the, all the other stuff that she ate once she got a little bit tipsy and decided, oh, why don't I just eat a bunch of junk? We should have had her on as a, a guest. Right, we should have, yeah, guest expert. <laughs> <laughs> so those are some of the alcohol warnings that we have um, before we get into the podcast, but we do have more to talk about. So um, something I already mentioned a few times is alcohol is a toxin. So how do you view that as affecting weight loss? Well, it's, it's definitely a factor, but it's definitely not the only factor. So a lot of times, uh, you know, you could eat some kind of real food that would really spike your insulin levels and pull you out of that fat zone and even push you into a, 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 a fat storing mode, like a potato is a perfect example. Um, a potato is a starch that will actually spike insulin more than table sugar would. Uh, I'm talking about regular potatoes, not sweet potatoes. But a person could eat that real food, and that's not a toxin, but it's going to create all this insulin spike. So then when you take some other processed food that has all these chemicals or you know some kind of alcohol that your body is viewing as a toxin, and a toxin is something that can't be utilized or um, dealt with properly becomes toxic to the body. And uh, so that's a lot of different things that people normally wouldn't view. People view a toxin as like a poison, you know, like you drink it and you're dead. But um, a, a toxin is a lot of things that a lot of people eat and drink every single day, but it's a toxin to the body. So that toxin is a burden on the body. And now the body has to put attention and resources towards trying to figure out how to deal with that burden. So the goal a lot of times is I want to get rid of this, but 
if there's also all these other environmental things and medication toxins and all these chemicals and pesticides, all these other things that are coming into our body, it's a lot of a burden. So you're adding another burden that could end up making the body store more in fat cell. And won't your body always deal with the toxins first, obviously before you're burning fat, so that way you don't die? Well, if, well, right, in that respect, but you know, something you're saying as far as burning the toxin, it can burn alcohol and, and there are priorities that the body puts different fuel sources in. That it's gonna, I'm gonna burn this first and when that's gone, I'll burn this and this and this. And alcohol is on the top of all the lists that anybody ever makes up. They're all those lists, the alcohol is right on the top. Um, so we won't get into the, the science of all that was because you'll just stare at me until I have to shut up. But uh, alcohol is on the top of that list. So whenever you're drinking alcohol, that's always going to be the first fuel that you use, that your body uses. But not all toxins are viewed as fuel, really. A lot of them, they're just a burden that the body has to deal with. And yes, uh, if too many toxins stay in the bloodstream, we just die. That's all it is. We just die. There we are dead. But the body's really good at making us not be dead. So it takes a lot of those toxins out of the bloodstream to protect the body. And it says, where do I put them? Where do I put them? Oh, I'm going to shove them in this fat cell because a fat cell can make a lot of toxins inert, which means that it, it can't cause any trouble. The only trouble it causes is expanding that fat cell and making it so our pants don't fit. And then you know, all the trouble that excess body fat can create, but it's still a good idea to the body. Hey, I'm going to deal with this now so that you don't die Thursday. Yeah. And I think it's important to note that while alcohol is a toxin and your body does want to get rid of it, a lot of the decisions you make after drinking the alcohol are also toxic. So you're not Oops. really, <laughs> yeah, you're not really looking to um, eat some clean fat and that's right. it. You're going to go right. after toxic processed foods so then you're just adding more toxins into an already toxic body right so the the decision the alcohol makes all these bad decisions happen and like this girl stacy i can remember that was a horrible decision and she was very toxic oh that's not what you're talking about really is it <laughs> no not the same thing but okay. uh, sorry yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I, I remember many, many nights of having too much to drink and the bar conveniently had a lot of good food to soak up all that alcohol. And right. um, a lot of people I know actually eat that food just so they can soak it up and feel better the next day. And it works for them. It never worked for me. I just felt bad no matter what. Right. And obviously if you're doing that several times per week, like I did, or even if you're just saving it for the weekend, that can still add up to stalling your weight loss completely. Even if you just do that one day each week, that could be enough to have you stall your weight loss or even possibly regain what you lost. And that's as a human. You know, what you just said is true as a human. Uh, as somebody starting keto, it can make it where weight loss is never going to show up and weight gain absolutely is. And why? Is, because for some people starting off, it will take them two or three weeks to even get into a state of ketosis where they're predominantly burning fat. And uh, if they're having a drink every weekend, their body's never getting into ketosis. So they're probably trying to increase their fat level like all the keto people say to do, but the carbs are not going long and low enough for the body to get into ketosis. So now they're having um, plenty of carbs and excess fat which the body's going to store as fat when you're not in a state of ketosis like that. Yeah. And if you're doing that every week, then you're never in ketosis long enough for it to really have any effect and you're just going to gain weight. Right. And, and the ripoff and why people do that is because they see people who maybe they've been in ketosis for a long time. They're completely fat adapted. They can have a lot of carbs or sugars for one day and get right back into ketosis the next day or so. So they see people drinking and like, oh, well, she's doing it. So it must be okay to do because she's lost, you know, so much weight on keto and look at how great she looks. So if she's doing that, I can do that. And it's, it's not always true. Yeah. So speaking of alcohol and ketosis, a lot of people are asking. So I figured I'd ask, even though there's probably not really an answer, but is there any set limit to how much alcohol it can take to kick someone out of ketosis? It really, it depends on how cute the bartender is and that will dictate the amount that you can drink and whether you care if you're in ketosis or not. Are you just less stressed out looking at a cute bartender? So that helps. 
Yeah, so it helps. It helps a lot. Um, no, so there really is no set amount because the trick is, is that how much insulin does it take a person to process the you know alcohol and sugars and whatever they're drinking? Um, how good is their body at removing something that it views as a toxin? So if the liver is already beat up, if somebody's on two or three medications, their liver is getting beat up by those medications because that's the only way that those medications can stay in the body is for them to overwhelm the liver enough to stay in. So if someone has something else that's overwhelming their liver, and there's lots of things that could be overwhelming their liver, um, but if a liver is already getting beat up, any amount of toxin is going to create trouble. But if someone has a, a great uh, champion liver uh, and they can filter out toxins very easily, and they only need a very small amount of insulin to process a large amount of sugar, then they could drink a lot more without kicking themselves out of ketosis or affecting ketosis as much as someone who might just take a little bit. Um, speaking of liver, for someone like me who's really toxic and can't deal with the toxins well, does doing something like taking a digestive enzyme with each drink, is that helpful to help you digest it? Is that something that you hear from other people or something? I have heard that before, yeah. Oh, I've never heard anybody try to use that excuse or uh, to justify that for their reason to drink. But, um, I, you know, it's not really going to do a whole lot, uh, especially, you know, maybe if someone needed really help in, in digesting specific types of foods, enzymes could help that a little bit more. Um, there are enzymes that help process carbohydrates better. So the thing is, is that when we talk about things like this, and we'll talk about this more when we get to wine too, but there are enzymes that help you process carbs better and they read that. Here's a study that showed this enzyme helped and it helps like 4% or something like that. So like, well, since I'm taking this, I can have 10 drinks instead of one or two. And you're really not doing the math right. If you, you just helped 40% of 400, whatever things you were drinking. So the answer is don't do that. That's not, not really going to help that much. Okay. Um, so obviously those who are listening are following keto. So hopefully they're doing this already. You definitely want to avoid sugary mixers because those for sure at even just one drink are going to kick you out of ketosis. But do you think there's any specific alcohols they need to avoid? Like is drinking vodka better than rum or is dark alcohol better than light? Vice versa? Uh, again, there are factors that count. And so people hear a factor that, you know, if it's a clear alcohol, that's not going to, you know, be as bad as rum or something like that. So they hear that and then they think that clear alcohol is fine and it's not going to affect their weight loss in any way. And it's just, it's not true. So the percentage is it's going to be a little bit better, but it's not going to be drastically better. Now, if you're just drinking straight vodka on the rocks or something like that, that is better than vodka, pineapple, Coke, all, you know, whatever kind of mixing sex on the beach thing you're going to put on there that has all that extra sugar. So that would be better. But again, it's not going to be, it's not going to make you immune to the effects. So I, the, what you want to have is you want to have a thing in your mind that you, where you understand the effect that the alcohol is going to have. And then all you have to decide is, are you okay with that or not? And if you're okay with it, then have a drink. Yeah. And when you're drinking that vodka on the rocks, that's kind of gross. So you'll probably drink less of it, which will help you. <laughs> yeah. That could be beneficial as too. Plus you may vomit if it's that gross. And then a lot of that will come back up. I'm um, not what, telling people to be uh, alcoholic bulimic. That's <laughs> Aren't vodka, isn't vodka made from potatoes or something? I, I think that it is. That it, I believe that, that I remember that as being correct. Okay. I don't know if that would affect ketosis any more than something like rum, which I don't know what that's made from. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. That, I don't think that it views the actual source that it came from. I think it, things change a lot when they're fermented and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of that information going out out there. And so people will gravitate more towards other things like that. But one of the biggest things, if you're going to drink, but you want to make it not quite as bad is just look at what you're mixing it with. Cause that's, more than half the trouble a lot of the time. Yeah. And so speaking of that, you obviously want to stay away from high sugar mixers like juice or soda, even ones that maybe you think are healthy. Because I remember when I first started 
doing low carb. Um, Jason, who actually comes from a very natural minded health family, argued with me that orange juice is healthy. And he held strong in his argument for a long time. He thought orange juice was healthy because it comes from oranges. Um, but just because something is labeled as juice, it's definitely not keto and it's definitely not healthy for you, especially when you mix it with alcohol. So it's, it's understandable though. I used to believe the same thing. I used to have like an egg white omelet every night at midnight and with a glass of orange juice. Yeah. And, and that was, that was the first book I wanted to read was mid I'm right. was going to be called midnight omelet. Cause I thought of all these benefits that I thought, and I didn't understand what I was doing with the orange juice at all. Yeah. So, um, stay away from that. And then if you're going with a liquor like vodka or rum, you can use non-flavored seltzer water as your mixer. And then some people add in a splash of lemon or lime juice just to make it taste a little bit better. Are there any other mixers you could think of? No water. Water is one. Yep. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. How about coconut oil? You could do that. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> that might be strange. Um, so some people will want to mix their drinks with diet soda, or as we like to call it in the Midwest, diet pop. What do you think about that? I don't think about that at all, but I, I want to hear what you say about this. I'm kind of excited to understand what you're talking about. So back in the day, back when I was hitting the bars, the Chicago bars, um, rum and diet was actually my drink of choice. Usually Bacardi rum with Diet Coke was my favorite drink. It was one of the only drinks I would drink. Um, and I just liked it because I always drink Diet Coke because I was always on a diet and I thought that was helping me. Right. So I assumed if I mixed it with rum, then I wouldn't be having all the calories that comes in a regular Coke. So that was just my drink and I liked it. Um, but now that I know more about diet soda and all of the damage it can cause because of the sweeteners, and not only the damaging sweeteners they put into it, but also it is raising your insulin. I know that I've read that it actually can raise your insulin more than regular Coke, just because you don't have the calories coming in. What do you think about that? Well, it's just sometimes for some people, and not everybody, but when you trick your body into thinking that you know nutrition or, or sugars and glucose is coming in, that that alone can raise gluc you know insulin levels for some people, and that's really what a lot of those artificial sweeteners are all about. They're all about tricking your body because your body uh, accesses minerals from a lot of things that are sweet. So when that signal comes in, the body thinks, oh, here comes the nutrition that I want. So this is great news. And then when the body doesn't get that nutrition, it doesn't say, oh, I was fooled. It just says, oh, that thing that was sweet, give me more of that because I, I obviously, I just need more. So that's why you get a lot of those cravings for those kinds of things. Yeah, I had an ex-boyfriend who um, was a nutrition major in college and he struggled with his weight. He was, he was in pretty good shape by the time I met him, but it was still, you know, always a constant struggle. And he drank a case of diet soda every day, 24 yeah. cans. And yeah. every which is crazy. <laughs> that is a little bit crazy. But what's the thing where some people feel more drunk when mixing alcohol with diet soda? What is that thing? Um, yeah, so being a drinker of diet soda with rum, I can't, I can't, it's so hard for me to say diet soda because in Chicago, it's just diet pop. But anyway, right. I'm drinking. I'm going to point at you and laugh if you keep saying diet pop, just by the way. I'll say diet Coke because that was okay. my, my preference, diet Coke. That's fine. Um, I have heard multiple times that when you mix alcohol, any kind of alcohol with diet drink, that you actually get you get drunker faster. Not necessarily that you feel drunker, but you do get drunker faster. Um, so I didn't know if you had anything to say about it. It sounds like you didn't. Yeah, so. I, don't, I, don't, I never heard that. Yeah. So I looked up some stuff because I have heard it many times. So I knew that information was out there. And what I found is that when you consume alcohol with any kind of diet mixer, it results in a higher breath alcohol concentration as compared to the same amount of alcohol consumed with a sugar sweetened mixer. So, you know, drinking diet Coke as compared to regular Coke. So um, this, they had a 2006 study, which is probably the first time I heard it. They suggest that artificial sweeteners in diet soda speed the absorption of alcohol, while real sugar actually slows it down um, from the stomach to the bloodstream. 
And the study that they did said that the subjects didn't report feeling any more impaired or intoxicated after drinking the diet soda mixer compared to the sugary soda, but they said that it can put people at an incre increased risk of drinking and driving because even though they don't feel more impaired, they actually are. Well, wow, that's interesting. Yeah, and I guess it kind of makes sense because um, when you're drinking the diet, you don't have any like sugar or carbs to slow it down. Right, nothing else for the body to focus on or to use up and uh, it's just going right for the alcohol. So I, I can see where that happened. But no, I never heard that. That's kind of cool. Yeah, so, so if you do decide to drink diet soda with your alcohol, just beware, especially since um, I think we're going to get to it, but a lot of people report actually feeling more drunk more quickly on keto. So if you are drink, drinking Diet Coke also, that can be another problem. Okay. Um, so now we wanted to talk about red wine because you had some things to say. Do you think red wine is a good option? I, I don't. Um, you know, I, I think it's fine as an option. I do think it's better than a lot of other things, but the confusion is that there's studies that come out that show that red wine is healthy. And a lot of those studies and a lot of people are basing that fact on resveratrol that's an ingredient that's found in red wine that comes from like the, the skin of the grape kind of thing. And so they did all these studies to show all the, be the health benefits from resveratrol. And it was like studies on rats mostly and such. And when you really looked at the situation, in order to get the amount of resveratrol, if I'm even saying that right, um, that they were showing that would uh, show any type of benefit at all, you would have to drink like 40 bottles of wine. Oh, wow. <laughs> so by the time you drink 40 bottles of wine, you're probably not having a lot of health benefits in that moment. Mm -hmm. So it's really just a, a fictional thing that allows people to think that they're doing something that's really great for them when really it's, it's not so great. So I'm fine with people drinking red wine if that's their choice of alcohol and they're okay with the results that come from drinking it. So that's not a problem for me. I just have the problem with people saying that it's actually good for you. Okay. Um, yeah, I have heard that. Like there's studies that say it helps you live longer and right. um, helps you have better health. I never drink it for that reason. I just drink it because I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> um, because after my rum and diet phase, I actually went to red wine for probably at least five years, which was my favorite. Um, so I, I did drink some red wine, but I always stuck to only one or two and I didn't do it every night I probably did it on like a Saturday night where I had you know one bigger glass of red wine or maybe two but any more than that could you are risking getting kicked out of ketosis and if you're new getting kicked out of ketosis can take another three to seven days or even longer to get back in so if you're doing that every week you're drinking that wine because you really want it um, you definitely need to test and see if it's kicking you out of ketosis. Right. So it's all about your, like, how much do you enjoy that? What, what is the goal that you have right now? How severely do you need or want to lose weight? How much weight do you need to lose? What other health issues are you dealing with? All that factors into whether you should be drinking or not. And if you've reached your goal weight and you do fine with wine, and especially like if you're having a glass with dinner, you're having it with food that kind of slows down how quickly it hits your bloodstream and spikes insulin and all those kind of things, then it's, it might not be so bad. And people that do keto do okay on wine from time to time when they're fat adapted and they can get right back in. It's really not, it doesn't have to be this horrible thing. But if you have a long way to go and you're far from your health goal, then it can be a lot easier just to drop it altogether. Yeah. And there is a company called Dry Farm Wines. If you listen to podcasts, you probably heard them. Sure podcast. Um, they do deliver high quality organic wines to your door. And they say that it's, it's keto friendly because they have lower sugar wines. Um, the reason that I was interested in it is because it's less toxic when you're getting that organic wines. They're, um, you know, they, they're not filled with pesticides, which a lot of wines are filled with pesticides. And then they also, I read this story once that pretty much anything living in a grape field gets ground up when they're making the wine. So they found like rats and awesome yucky stuff that you probably don't want to drink mixed up in your wine. So I try to stick with the organic wines if I actually drink it. 
So did you try any of that dry farm, lower sugar wines and while you were in ketosis and did you, how did you do and did you get back in or what was your deal? Um, I do have some, I was on their delivery list for a while and it's pretty good. Um, I think, okay, so I have, <laughs> if I stick to one or two glasses, yes, I stay in ketosis, but the very first time I tried it was after I just had Joey I wasn't breastfeeding, so that wasn't an issue. So I decided to go to a, we went to a wedding and I decided to bring my own organic wine with me. And so I hadn't drank in, you know, however long it was, 10 months, 11 months, however long, hadn't had a drink. And I decided drinking the entire bottle would be a good idea. Yeah, so that's not a solid test. That was not a good idea. Um, the next day happened to be Father's Day. So Jason <laughs> wanted to sleep in. He did not get to sleep in because he was in dying. <laughs> so, yeah, drinking a full bottle after you haven't drank anything in nearly a year is not a good idea, but having one or two glasses, I usually do okay with. Right. And I do yeah. um, feel less of a hangover, but you know, I'm also doing a lot of other things to help with that. Like, you know, s staying on top of electrolytes, um, drinking enough water to try to wash it away. So I do yeah. other You've also improved your bile flow, which is the main exit strategy for toxins in the body to help get things out. So that gives a person a bigger threshold as far as the toxins they can take in when the body has the ability to remove toxins correctly. Do you have any thoughts, um, speaking of liver, on like castor oil packs, like putting a castor oil pack over your liver? I don't have any thoughts on that. Okay. For, for what purpose? Is that, do you do that when you go drinking or are you talking about just for general... So I do have one, um, just, it's supposed to help just with digestion in general. Um, but I recently did have a, a drink and I, I mean it like even these days, even one drink will just run me into the ground for like a week or more. So I have to be very careful. And so I had a drink, maybe two, and I put the castor oil pack on overnight and I woke up feeling fine the next day. Oh, I've never even heard of that. I don't know how, what the mechanism would be for that. Yeah, maybe I heard about it on a different podcast. Maybe we should talk to her because, you know, it seems pretty helpful for me for at least that one night. And I do it other nights. Um, it's a, It can get a little messy, but I kind of like the way I feel afterwards. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, um, all right. So some experts believe that red wine can help people lose weight and they promote the health benefits, saying that it can drink longer. But you kind of already said that, that you, you believe that's a myth, right? Right. And, you know, anything that could relax a person could have benefits if the person is very stressed, you know, but that uh, because stress is more harmful than most people think that it is. So, you know, ways to bring that down can be beneficial. Um, but just a lot of that information that people use as far as saying that this is healthy is just not accurate. Okay. And what about beer? Because I know there's a lot of people out there that come to keto and they really like to drink beer, but it seems like all the beer out there is really high in carbs. Yeah. And it seems like there are new beers coming out that are a lot lower in carbs just because low carb is so popular right now. And I haven't tried any, I don't know if they even taste like anything or how they affect anything. Um, but I do know that there are better options than there used to be. But uh, again, um, if beer is your alcohol of choice, you got to look at you know, the, the kind that you're drinking, but also uh, just know that it's going to affect your way just like any alcohol would and any type of liquid sugar. And we haven't even mentioned this in this episode, really, that it's really the liquid sugar is the most problematic thing uh, about alcohol. Because when you eat a candy bar, those sugars have to be digested and broken down, and then they go into the bloodstream and spike the insulin levels. But with a liquid sugar of any kind or liquid alcohol, it's going in very quickly. And so it can spike uh, blood sugar and insulin a lot higher than, you know, three or four candy bars even would. So that's one of the biggest problems of alcohol is that it's in a liquid state that affects your body. So you're looking at grams of carbs and all these kind of things, and you're looking at how many sugars it has, and oh, I can handle this, it fits into my macros. But the reality is that your body processes it in the liquid form, you might as well multiply it by four or five because that's the way that it's going to be received in your body since it's received much faster. Yeah. And I think, um, but do, do you have any thoughts about the protein in beer? Because if you look at the labels on much, they do have carbs, but a lot of beer also has protein. Oh, I've never even noticed that or had a thought about that before. <laughs> I have 
definitely scanned beer labels before because I used to drink beer as well. Surprise, surprise. Um, but yeah, there's something like Miller Lite or I don't know which one. I think Michelob Ultra Light. They've always been pretty low in carbs, um, but there probably are more choices since then. Um, but definitely if you are drinking, avoid anything that's like a craft beer because those for sure have way too many carbs and those will kick you out of ketosis. All right, cool. Okay, and then um, the final thing I want to talk about when it came to alcohol is a lot of ketoers report having a lower tolerance to alcohol. So I always like to warn people when they ask me questions about drinking alcohol, warn them that they will get drunk much, much faster. But why do you think that is? I, I've never even thought about this, really. So I want to hear what your answer is. I think part of it is just, you know, all the extra carb that you're used to eating. A lot of people use that to soak up the alcohol. So you're not obviously partaking in those. So it's just going to hit you more when you're keto. I think I have heard other explanations. I don't really remember what they were. <laughs> yeah, but that does make some sense. I mean, it's just one more thing that could be slowing down how fast it's getting into your bloodstream and it's not there right now. So that, that definitely could be a factor, but I don't know anything about uh, ketones making alcohol more, uh, you know, effective or to a person. I don't know anything about that. I don't know if that's a thing or not. Yeah. So even though neither of us really know a lot about it, we just know that it can happen. So if you do decide to drink alcohol, then, um, definitely drink a little bit more slowly because you might get a lot drunker faster, which you don't want. Um, I think that's all that we had to say about alcohol, but if you now feel like you have the green light to go ahead and pour a glass of wine and make sure you head over to our free masterclass at eating fat is the new skin.com slash masterclass, pour yourself a glass of wine and learn the three big mistakes that a lot of ketoers make that actually keep them stuck. Right. And we'll tell you now that mistake number three is drinking wine. So we probably should have told you that at the beginning before you poured the glass and started all the way to the end of the masterclass. Oh, that's not what it was. It was something different. No, it wasn't. They can, okay. they can have their wine. <laughs> okay. So uh, next week is going to be great because we're going to talk about ways to get through the holidays on keto. Alcohol is one way, but I don't think we mentioned it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I don't think we did. Uh, so that might get you some good tips at a, at a timely time frame. So if you need to hear about anything that we talked about in this episode, you can check out the show notes at uh, chatthefat.com forward slash episode 83. And where do they see the masterclass for free if they want to see it right now? At eatingfatisthenewskinny.com slash masterclass. Okay, we will see you guys next week. Bye-bye now. Whether you're brand new to keto or just looking to move past roadblocks, join us for our next Troubleshooting Keto Master Workshop. Go to chatthefat.com slash workshop to find upcoming dates and register for this totally free event. You just might find your missing piece of the puzzle. Until then, we'll see you next week on Chat the Fat. <laughs>